Hey guys, welcome to Stories to the Nation, and we've got something super special for you guys today. A Winnie the Pooh sleep story from therapeutic storyteller Dan Jones. Now listen, if you guys want to hear more stories like this, let me know in the comments. Alright, time to get cozy, close those eyes, and let the story carry you away. Later guys. The Mysterious Stranger In a small corner of the hundred-acre wood, where the wildflowers danced in the breeze and the bees hummed in perfect harmony, Christopher Robin, our small but wise boy, was having a picnic. His friends, Winnie the Pooh, the bear of very little brain, but lots of love for honey, and Piglet, a very small animal, were there too. The sun was beaming down from a clear blue sky, warming the faces of our friends as they sat on a patchwork blanket amongst the daisies. They had honey sandwiches, naturally for Pooh and other such picnic treats, which were quite enjoyed by all. Isn't it just the sort of day, said Christopher Robin, to sit and do nothing at all, except eat honey? Pooh added with a content sigh, licking his paws to savour the last bits of the sticky sweetness. Just so, agreed Piglet, though he wasn't as keen on honey as Pooh was, it seemed the right thing to say. As they enjoyed their picnic, and the pleasantness of doing nothing in particular, Christopher Robin's eyes fell upon an unusual sight. There, leading from the nearby path and going around the honeypot, were footprints, peculiar footprints, footprints they had never seen before in the hundred-acre wood. Christopher Robin got up to examine them closely, his face full of wonder. Pooh and Piglet looked on curiously. These aren't like any footprints we've seen before, are they? Christopher Robin said, crouching down to get a better look. Pooh squinted at them, his small black eyes thoughtful. They don't look like rabbits, or eels, or owls, or kangas, or roos. He listed off their friends carefully, trying to match the footprints to them and they're not like yours or mine, or piglets, Christopher Robin added, seeming even more intrigued. Piglet, who had been quiet till now, finally found his voice. Could it be a heffalump? he squeaked nervously. Christopher Robin laughed. I don't think so, piglet. Heffalumps don't usually visit the hundred-acre wood, you know. Besides, these prints are quite small. He paused and looked at his two friends. I think we might have a new friend in the Hundred Acre Wood. A new friend? That was a most curious and exciting thought. A new friend meant new stories, new adventures and new games. It meant a new voice to join in their songs, a new face to share their picnics, a new hand to join in their rounds of poo sticks. It was quite simply the most exciting thing that could happen on such a beautiful sunny day. Their picnic was forgotten in the thrill of this new discovery. The rest of the day held a promise of an adventure, and the three friends were ready to meet it with open hearts. And so, in the golden light of the afternoon sun, a call to action rang through the hundred-acre wood. Christopher Robin, our young and earnest leader, summoned all his friends for a grand assembly. With the mystery of the new footprints unfurling like an uncharted map, the wood seemed to hum with an unusual, electrifying anticipation. Eeyore, the old grey donkey, arrived with a slow, plodding gait, his tail swishing rhythmically behind him. Kanga, carrying Roo in her pouch, 
hopped over with an agility that defied her motherly demeanour. Owl, with his great, round eyes and even greater wisdom, flew in with an air of scholarly interest. Assembled under the grand old oak, they listened attentively as Christopher Robin described the puzzling footprints. We have a guest in the wood, it seems, Christopher Robin began, tracing the footprints with a stick. We don't know who they are, but as good neighbours it's our job to find out and welcome them properly. A murmur of agreement rippled through the gathering. Each creature warmed by the idea of extending their friendship circle. It was decided after much discussion and a few honey sandwiches, because Pooh declared he couldn't think properly on an empty stomach, that they would split into teams to track the footprints. Pooh, who was very fond of new friends, especially if they too were fond of honey, led one group. His team consisted of Kanga, who had a good eye for detail, and Owl, who was wise and knew many things, even if he didn't know everything. The other group was led by Piglet. This was a little surprising, as Piglet was a very small animal, and sometimes felt nervous about important things. But when Christopher Robin looked at him and said, Piglet, we need your bravery, Piglet puffed up his chest, stood a little taller and nodded determinedly. Eeyore and Roo were to accompany Piglet, their calm and cheerful demeanours bound to support the little Piglet. With a spirit of camaraderie, the two teams set off in different directions, following the trail of mysterious footprints. Pooh's group went towards the west, where the stream babbled over smooth, worn stones and the honeybees buzzed in the clover, while Piglet's group ventured towards the shadowy depths of the east wood, where the old pine trees whispered secrets to the wind. There was a thrill in the air. As they embarked on their quest, their hearts full of the prospect of a new friend. Even the Hundred Acre Wood seemed to share their excitement, the sun casting long, playful shadows that danced along with them, guiding their way on the grand adventure that lay ahead. For what could be more exciting than a new friend, a fresh set of footprints to follow, and the possibility of countless more tales to be woven in the heart of their beloved Hundred Acre Wood. The Hundred Acre Wood was awash with the delightful excitement of exploration. For Pooh and his group, the journey was filled with intrigue and just a hint of mischief. To Pooh, everything seemed a little more delectable. Every bush was inspected for potential honey stores, every crevice of the trees explored for hidden hives. There seemed to be a fair bit of honey about, who announced with satisfaction, his voice muffled by the honeycomb he was industriously chewing. A new friend must be quite fond of it too. Kanga smiled at Pooh's honey-centric deductions. She couldn't help but find humour in his simple, affectionate character. Owl, meanwhile, nodded sagely, although he knew better than to base their investigation solely on Pooh's love for honey. In the Eastwood, Piglet's group had a different adventure unfolding. Eeyore, with his usual gloomy charm, didn't expect them to find anything. Most likely, it's just another Tuesday, he muttered, but followed along in solidarity. Roo hopped around enthusiastically, peering into burrows and bouncing into bushes, his energy brightening up the shaded woodland. Piglet, wearing the hat of leadership, with unaccustomed nervousness, jumped at every rustling leaf and every snapping twig, seeing shadows of uncertainty around each corner. But with each passing moment, 
he found his courage growing. After all, even the smallest animals can surprise themselves when they have friends relying on them. As the sun began its descent, turning the sky into an artist's palette of oranges, purples and pinks, the two groups found themselves at the same location. Their individual trails of adventure had led them to the end of the mysterious footprints at the entrance of a newly constructed den nestled against the roots of a mighty oak. Exhausted but exhilarated, the two parties exchanged stories of their quest. Pooh, with honey still smeared around his mouth, talked of his tantalizing findings of abundant honey. Piglet recounted his adventure through the East Wood, his voice shaky at first but gaining confidence as he spoke. As their chatter dwindled, the reality of their discovery settled in. They were at the doorstep of their new friend. The day's pursuit had led them here, to this quiet, snug little den hidden under the knotted roots of an old oak. There was a peculiar calmness that settled over them, a mix of tiredness from a long day of exploring and the trepidation of meeting someone new. As they huddled together, the soft whispers of the hundred-acre wood around them, the day's journey seemed all the more precious. They were a team, an oddball group of explorers, who were more than friends. They were a family, and they were about to welcome a new member into their special, tight-knit circle in the heart of the hundred-acre wood. As the sun dipped, behind the tall trees of the Hundred Acre Wood. Our friends huddled together outside the new den, a flurry of whispered conversations and expectant glances shared among them. Christopher Robin, the source of their courage, stepped forward, encouraging them with a reassuring nod. Hello, he called out, his voice soft yet clear echoing through the stillness of the wood. There was a pause, a quiet that seemed to hold its breath. Then, from the darkness of the den, they heard a rustling sound. Out came a creature they'd never seen before, covered in an array of bony plates, his small eyes twinkling with surprise and curiosity. It was an armadillo, a rather jovial and energetic one named Archie. Hello there. Who might you all be? Archie asked, his voice as cheerful as the twinkle in his eyes. The friends introduced themselves, their names rolling out like a comforting melody. Christopher Robin, Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, Eeyore, Kanga, Roo, and Owl. Archie, for his part, was pleasantly surprised to be welcomed by so many friendly faces after his long journey. As Archie shared his story, they gathered around, their curiosity peaked. The armadillo had strayed too far from his home and found himself in the hundred-acre wood. His tale was filled with remarkable feats, charming encounters, and just a dash of misadventure, much like their own journey that day. I simply lost my way, Archie admitted with a good-natured chuckle. But I have to say, the Hundred Acre Wood is quite a friendly place, especially when one is greeted by such kind faces. His words touched their hearts, for they prided themselves on being just that, friendly and kind. It was, as Christopher Robin often said, you can never be unkind in the Hundred Acre Wood, for that's not the wood's way. Even Eeyore managed a smile, his tail swishing in what could be mistaken for contentment. Kanga, ever the mother, offered Archie some of the food they'd packed for their expedition. 
who, relishing the company of a new friend, declared that it was indeed a grand day for a picnic, even if it was dusk, as the sun cast long shadows, bathing the hundred-acre wood in hues of twilight, they found a new bond forming. It was in the shared laughter, the exchange of stories, and the simple joy of new friendship. For all the anticipation and the tiny bit of trepidation, they had found a friend in Archie, and that made the entire day's adventure absolutely worth it. Even as they prepared to depart for their homes, each friend promised to return the following day, to share more stories, more laughter, and to make Archie feel more at home. For such was the way of the Hundred Acre Wood, a place that turned strangers into friends, and friends into family. The following day, as the first rays of sunlight painted the Hundred Acre Wood in a warm, golden glow, our friends came together once more, a little bit excited and a lot more jubilant. The day was ripe with anticipation, not for the unknown, but for the newly known. Archie the armadillo, who was no longer a stranger, but a friend. Archie was welcomed with open arms, or in Pooh's case, open paws, ready for a bear hug. In their delightful clamour, they all worked together to set up a grand picnic, for every picnic is a celebration, and this one was in honour of their newest resident, Archie. Here, Archie, this is honey, Pooh declared, pushing a pot of his beloved honey towards Archie. There's nothing quite like it, you see. And these, Kanga said, placing a batch of freshly baked cookies beside the honey pot are for everyone to share. Even Eeyore contributed a bunch of thistles, placing them near Archie, with a murmured, you might like them. And that, in Eeyore's own way, was quite a warm welcome. As they all sat together, the air was filled with laughter and the sound of joyous eating. The very trees of the Hundred Acre Wood seemed to sway in shared merriment. The friends had learned an important lesson, that the unknown need not be feared, and that a stranger was just a friend they hadn't met yet. Piglet, who had initially been the most apprehensive, was now sitting next to Archie, engaged in a spirited discussion about exploration and bravery. Rue, who had found a new playmate, was already planning their next adventure. Christopher Robin, watching them all with a warm smile, leaned back against the familiar trunk of his favourite tree. The hundred-acre wood was a little larger that day, its boundaries extended by one more friend, its heart beating a tad more joyously. As dusk approached, the picnic began to wind down. It was a day to remember filled with new friendship, shared adventures, and the sweet promise of many more tales to come. The Hundred Acre Wood was indeed a lot richer with Archie, the once mysterious stranger, now a cherished friend in its midst. Before they parted, Christopher Robin spoke, his words echoing through the quieting wood, each friend represents a world in us, a world possibly not born until they arrive, and it's only by this meeting that a new world is born. Welcome to our world, Archie. And with a heart full of warmth, Archie responded, Thank you, all of you. I couldn't have asked for a better place to lose my way to. Thus ended another day in the Hundred Acre Wood a day of unexpected footprints leading to expected friendships, of timid explorations blooming into joyful encounters. As the stars began to twinkle in the night sky, 
one thing was clear. The Hundred Acre Wood was not just a place, but a feeling, a feeling of home, friendship and love, a place where every stranger was just a friend waiting to be discovered.